Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is the uh, this is a session that I'm recording on uh, lesson 18 from say 300 2017. So this uh, this lecture is uh, focused on uh, accounting to a four course from Humber College. So student who has actually following up these lectures, uh, I wanted to tell you guys the series the, the lecture series are starting from lesson 16 so the last lecture that I recorded was lesson 17 focused on creating custom profiles so I'm briefly telling you guys what's important from lesson 18 here as well so uh, once you finish creating up all the customer profile that you needed uh, for for this uh, for this company now you're ready to start up recording transactions so here I'm using a file which already have lesson 18 completed but I wanted to show you guys what are the key takes that, that are important in, in this chapter. So in lesson 18, you guys are focused on recording transactions. So as you guys are familiar with the process, how the uh, say 300 works is that uh, you have uh, GL, General Ledger Module, and all the sub-modules that we are creating is automatically linked uh, to General Ledger. So uh, in the last two chapters, what we have done is we create different, uh, we did all the setup for account receivable. So now all the account receivables uh, information that we need to use, they are already linked with the general ledgers. We create distribution codes, they are linked with the general ledger. We're creating items, they are linked with the uh, with the general ledger. And we create a customer profiles, and those customer profiles are linked to the GL account through account sets. So everything is linked. Now you're coming to a point where you want to start recording transactions. So. When we started this uh, this uh, this uh, this test book, uh, we recorded some of the transactions in January, but those transactions were recorded in general ledger. So that means anytime we have a sales, what we do is we manually go in, same with, uh, we have recorded a sale, which is debit, uh, account receivable, credit sales, credit, GST or HST. And then we manually record a general entry for each sale transaction. But that's only if you are using general ledger. But when you start using sub-ledger, which is the modules, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to start recording not the general entries, recording sales, the transactions, and then those transactions will be automatically linked to a general ledger and will, will automatically create general entries for you. So now the starting point is that, okay, we are ready to record, uh, start recording transactions, but the first thing that you have to do is you have to enter the opening palace in the sub ledger, which is the account receiver general ledger. So, very first thing that you're going to do is, if you know that, if you go in the general ledger, look at the GL accounts chart of account. Okay. So, on that chart of account, if you look at an account receivable, it has a balance of seventy-five thousand dollar, but that seventy-five thousand dollar is a balance on February. So, if I change the date to show me the balance as of January 31st. It's going to show me my account receivable is 75,819 Canadian, 9,891, 19 cents in US. So now I have to make sure this number matches with my account receivable module. So the first thing that you're going to do is in account receivable, you are going to record a batch and that batch will consist of opening entry that equals to the balance in general ledger. So, so when you come into the AR transactions, all the transactions are going to be recorded in these three different batches, invoice, receipt, and adjustment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into invoice batch list, and what you guys see there is you already have an opening batch, which we created and posted already. So if I click on it, you see 17 entries. That means I had 17 invoices equals to 109 Two twelve thirty one. That was the opening balance. Okay, that was the balance as of January thirty first. So now, when you're doing an opening balance, you don't care about uh, the sales between GST and HST. You simply wanted to record an invoice saying, "Know what? Invoice one is for Union Electronic. Invoice number one zero zero. The date was December thirty first." December 15, 2018. What was the amount on it? Was 3,450. So you put that amount. Taxes, you zero it out. 
you don't care about the taxes because these taxes were related to 2018 and would have been posted to the GL account that need to be posted. So here the whole purpose of doing the opening entry is to make sure we enter the invoices, whoever they belong to and the amount and the date so that we can keep a track of when these invoices are going to be due. So what you're going to do is the first thing is you will record all the invoices. Okay, so here you have 11, 12, 13, 14. So there are 17 invoices. You record all of them. Once you record, what you do is you post that batch. Once you post it here, after posting the batch here, your balance will agree with the balance in the general ledger. Okay, and now once that's done, you so remember what I told you guys in, la, in last couple of weeks uh, before is whenever you're doing an opening at in sub ledger, what you do in the general ledger is you delete the batch in the general ledger. So this batch gets posted here and will be deleted in the general ledger batch. Okay, so this is the first thing that you're going to do in this exercise. Then the other information that's important information that's covered in this exercise is recording transactions. So here I'm going to show you guys how to create a batch and the different types of transactions that you can record under invoice batch. So for example, I'm creating a new batch. So I go into the invoice batches and here click new. When I click new, it's going to take me to a new batch. So it's batch number five, and then I put a description saying what is it for. I'm going to say it is February transactions. Okay, I'm not going to record it, but I'm just going to show you guys how the transaction works because the February transactions are already recorded. So it gives a batch date. You know what? This is the date for the batch. Now this is not so important than the than the recording a date under the entry. So entry number one. So here we have two options, item and summary. So whenever you're doing an item, you have to select the item from the item that you have created in the last, uh, in lesson 16. So here's, you know what, whenever you're selling an item that's already in your list, you select an item, but if it's not a sale of an item, you are giving a discount or you are recording a shipment charges or delivery charges, doesn't belong to an item, you select the summary. See, when you change the summary, you have the option to select an account or select a distribution code. So here I'm saying that I'm going to select an item, and then it's going to ask me the customer name, I'm saying Mr. John, I select Mr. John, and then if I want to pick up the different location, I can pick up the sale, chip location different, and then the last part is the, the document type. So now this is where the difference comes in. So this is what I want you guys to understand is there are three different places to record each transaction. There is invoices, debit note, and credit note. So the key thing is whenever you're selling something to a customer, it's an invoice. Okay? Debit note means when you are charging an additional charges that already belongs to an invoice which was already sent out to a customer, you set that as a debit note. The third one is a credit note. So credit note is when you're giving an allowance or there's a sales return and if there's any special allowance that you're giving to a customer that belongs to a credit note okay so these are the differences so if i record an invoice I need to give a date saying when is the sale saying this is february 7 and the posting will be the same you don't need to enter the document number because the system will generate the next invoice number as a document number once you finish that, you come into the bottom, select which item you're selling. So I'm going to say I'm selling 1010 item number, which is the light fixture, and how many quantity I'm selling, I'm selling 10 of it. See the price automatically shows up here, and this is the cost, this is the price, this is the cost. Okay, so the cost is only for you, nothing for, uh, it's not for a customer, but customer just knows that this is 150. Right, because 15 euros per unit. That's pretty much what you enter here. Then you go to taxes. It's defaultly picking up Ontario. If you have a different province, you can change it. The term is 30 days, which is for this customer. And you go into the option. You don't have to check anything else. Sales. So if you have a salesman that's already linked to this customer, it will automatically pick up. If anything different, you can change it. And then last part is total. So it tells you the document total is 150 plus 1950, 169, and your total is 
it's minus 69. You click add. Okay. Then you go into the next item and you keep going like similar process. So here if you want to record a credit note for example, so I'm going to say Union Electronic, I'm issuing a credit note. So here I select a credit note, then it's going to ask me the document date. So the document date is 8 of February. Whenever you're selecting a debit note and credit note, it's always going to ask you to apply against an invoice. So here you click on the browser and you select the invoice that you want to apply against. So here I'm going to apply this to 1000. So now if you have a certain item that's being returned, you can pick that up. So you know what, the, this customer is returning two of these items. I can put that in two of these. And the good thing about this software is you don't have to put negative. The system already knows the credit note is not going as a negative. So you simply put in this. If you're giving an allowance, not the item is be returned, you change this item to summary. So in this case, I'm assuming it's a credit note against the return of two items. So I put that in, offset against this invoice, and then this tax is already there. You don't need to change anything. Then you go to the tab, you say 30, two more days of tax, click add. Okay, you can record this as many transactions in that particular batch. Once you finish recording this batch, you simply close it, and then you come right here, here's your batch, you want to post it, what you do is, ready to post, you change it, ready to post from no to yes, this asks you to print a batch, so you can print it on the screen only, once that's done, it's not letting me, but once this is up, um, let me just change it previous so I can show you guys. So you print. Okay, once it's printed, uh, you see it on a screen. Okay, so it's taking a little more time. So this, this is the screen that you guys will see. That's your batch. You don't need to print it for any other purposes. Once you're ready, you click okay, and close this screen. You like to post a yes and then click post. Once you click post, it gives you a message that your batch is posted. Okay, so that's how you record transaction in your invoice batches. Okay. And uh, there's other information that you guys can go through in the test book, but these are the important information that you need to know from this chapter. There's another information that may be important, but it's just for you guys to review, I'm not going to ask you anything, is creating recurring charges. So you can read through it what the purpose is. So I can briefly tell you what the recurring charges are. If you have a certain customer that you want to bill on a monthly basis, on a periodic basis, you can create a recurring charges and then have that run each month. So that way you don't have to remember that recording devices, it automatically remember the amount, the GL code, and everything else that you need to set up, you can set it up once, and that will run automatically. All you have to do is just click Run Recording Charges. Okay, so just read through it. I'm not going to ask you anything, but it's just uh, good for you guys to know. Okay, so this will be the end of lesson 18. So now if you guys wanted to complete this, take lesson and, uh, end of lesson 17 exercise, uh, the database file, and complete all the exercise that are required from lesson 18. Okay. Good luck everybody. See you later.